we can play some music. It's Is fine. Music? No, it's fine. We can. All right, because we're gonna talk. I thought you so. Said you so. guys, if there's a noise, it's my fucking laptop. <laughs> okay, it's not me. Hi, my name's Maria. Welcome Hi, I'm our, Victoria. We're um, we're gonna be doing some stuff here. Um, so we can I guess talk about how we know each other. So we met. Uh, we work together. We're pediatric um, surgical technologists. Yeah, that's how we met. Yeah. So we've known each other for a little bit because I started working there in December. Yeah. Yeah, so we um, we just got this idea. Um, we both have a passion for true crime. For true crime. And, and makeup. And obviously. makeup and hair. Lifestyle yeah. stuff. Even though at work I'd be looking wrench. I do too. <laughs> um, you know, I can come out of that shell. So, um, but yeah, we're just, uh, today we're going to talk about one that we were interested in, which is the... Uh, Rodney Alcala. Uh, and he was the called, dating show. The dating show. Killer. Killer. Um, so we're gonna, this is probably, if this comes, if this is a hit, we'll, um, try to do this every we'll Tuesday. we more true crime we're call Tuesday. It, it's gonna be true crime Tuesdays. Um, so, yeah, I guess we can we're just. We're gonna do a date night look. Date night, yeah. Yeah. I kind of did we'll a little hairy, kind of saying. talk about him while we do mm -hmm. our, do our makeup. Looks. Yeah. Um, in September of 1968. Police get a call from a citizen saying there is a beige color car with no tags following a little girl. Um, and it gave them a bad feeling. The little girl was eight year old Tally Shapiro. She was on her way home from school. Um, so the car followed, the citizen followed that car to the home because Tally got in the car yeah. with the man that was talking to her because he told her that he had pictures that her parents wanted him to show her which was obviously a blatant lie because he's a creep yeah oh, yeah a creep for sure so so she gets in the car and um, the police the police get to the address that's um, related to the that the, the car. citizens gave them yeah and um, when they get there, Tally was in the kitchen floor. She had been strangled with a 10 pound metal bar that was still on her. And um, so she's basically dead on the floor. They thought she was dead. They pulled yeah. the bar off of her. And they had ran to look for the man that had answered the door. Well, he had answered the door and said that he was getting out of the shower. And said, yeah. I'll be back in just a few minutes. And then he and literally they said, went. No, I'm coming in now. Busted in the door. Yeah. He said later and just left. So he like ran out the back door. Or some <laughs> yeah. Some crazy thing. When they that, went yeah. in to um, find him, he was gone, and they had left Tally there. And when they came back through, she was coughing. So they had called the ambulance. She had been sexually assaulted. By piece of garbage. By this uh, trash um, trash bag of a man. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I'm guessing, in my opinion, I feel like he thought she was dead. Yeah. Like he left because he was like, oh, I mean, she's dead. She's never going to talk. So whatever. Yeah. And also, I feel like the police should have checked her pulse too. Yeah. Instead of just like throwing the barbell off. Because he said he used like an oven mitt or something. Or a towel, kitchen towel, yeah, to cool. pick the barbell up off of her mm -hmm. and just laid it aside. And then he left to go find Rodney Alcala to see if he was still in the house. Yeah. But why wouldn't you just check to see if she was still alive? So they they got there just in time. Um, her attacker had slipped away. The police did a search of the home. And they had found tons of pictures young women, tons of equipment, video, camera equipment, and um, a bunch of people. They found some um, UCLA graduate stuff that belonged to Rodney Alcala, so that's how they id ID'd him. So basically, after this though, this is when he moves across to like, was it New York? I think, I think so. So he'd he, been, he'd been hiding for like, after that he hid for like three years. 
changed and, his um, name. Changed his name to, to John Berger. Yeah, John Berger. So a lot of people then knew him as John Berger. John Berger. Not Rodney Alcala. Rodney Alcala. Um, people in New York knew him as John Berger. He um, went to NYU to the film school there. And um, and then Tally's parents moved her to Mexico yes, they shortly moved. after the incident because I mean why would you want to keep your kid there yeah so they moved a horrible they moved to a whole different situation. country yes and um, the FBI put him on the um, most wanted list right after that because they couldn't find him and um, how they found him was two girls went to the post office and said that is our um, that is John Berger. Counselor yeah. at our girls' summer camp in New Hampshire. Yeah. His name is John Berger. Yeah. A girls' summer camp. A girls' summer camp. Oh, my gosh. He was allowed to do a stupid summer camp. He was at a girls' summer camp as and a counselor. counselor. Yeah. So, people recognized the... Uh, so scary. Two, yeah. So, they Those recognized the picture. Recognized him. And they were like, this is... It's Mr. I, Burger. Yeah, it's Mr. Burger. So, I guess they reported it. They they reported it to the police. police and the yeah. FBI found him. Um, so, they had found that he was living um, in NYU at the film school um, in the early 70s. He was caught in 71 when they um, asked him what he had done to Tolly. He said, I want to forget about that. Yeah. I don't want to talk about things Rod Alcala did. He was mental, literally. I like, don't want to talk about well, things Rod Alcala did. Like, you fucking are him. <laughs> yeah. Rod Alcala. Yeah. Sir, you are Rod Alcala. You, even though you think that piece you're of trash a human person. being. Yeah, you're not a different person. Um, so anyway, well, he didn't. You would think that this would be the end of like his whole, you know, like he goes to jail, blah blah blah. But he, um, well, it was not the end. It was basically. not the end because Tolly's parents had moved her to Mexico. They weren't around for her to testify. Uh, to pre even press charges, I guess. So all he got charged was sexual assault. Se sexual assault, and then he and was he put was, on the sex offender. He was put on the sex offender list. list. Yeah. Um. He got 34 months in jail. 34 months. 34 months. That's garbage. Insane. That's garbage. Garbage. <laughs> That's garbage. garbage. Then two months after his release. He was arrested again for assaulting a 13-year-old girl who he had offered a ride to school and was paroled two years after that. Yeah. Okay. How? Keep him keep him in jail. Yeah. But, I mean, like, how does stuff like this, I mean, I don't know if this was just a different time or if it, this is still happening, I guess. But It's still happening. It's I still mean, happening for sure. But I don't know how people are just okay. How is our how is it okay to do this stuff? To just release a sex offender yeah. back out into the world, especially when he basically yeah. When you know good and well, they're just gonna keep doing it. Exactly. After he was released um, as a sex offender, the Los Angeles Times hired him. Great. 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 Oh, and he tried out for the dating game now. Okay, so this is After why he was that. After he had... He was on the dating game. Assaulted Tyler Shapiro, the 8-year-old, and sexually assaulted the 13-year-old that he offered a ride to school to. He made it onto the dating game. He made it onto the dating game. And won! So, so the dating, dating game! So the dating game, for anybody that doesn't know, is basically a show where, I guess it's like three guys or whatever girls on the other, I guess, back three in the day. Three contestants. It'll be three contestants. And the contestant choosing just hears, like, what they like. They don't get to see they what don't get they to look see like. They, yeah. They just get to hear, like, I they guess. They get to ask questions and to the contestants, yeah. you know. And it's a whole lot of sexual innuendo, and it's a lot of uncomfortable moments. 
that was really gross looking dudes. <laughs> like <laughs> really gross. Like it's like, like Rodney Alcala like, looking yes. dudes. Mostly just Rodney Alcala. The other dudes are perfectly fine. But she ended up not so going out after him. after that, um he was when he won, um Cheryl Bradshaw, the which is the contestant or the, the one that chose the right. girl that had chosen him yeah. to go on the date with said that she wouldn't go out with him because he gave her the creeps. Yes. There you go, Cheryl. <laughs> there you go. You go, girl. You because cannot. He is gross yes. with his gross hair. Um, <laughs> this girl. He was fucking ugly. Jed Mills was an actor. He was one of the contestants that day. Mm -hmm. She could have got an actor. And she picked a creep. She picked. But good thing she didn't go out with him. I'm so glad she, she didn't go out with him. She basically saved her own life. She could have gotten murdered. Yeah. By this creep. After that, on June 20th, 1979, 12-year-old um, Robin Samso from Huntington Beach was on her way to her new job answering phones at her ballet studio. Yeah. She was doing it in exchange for lessons. Was this the girl that was on the beach? Yeah. With her friend? With her friend. Yeah. So this is the girl that was on the beach with her friend. Yeah. Um, she stopped at her friend's house on her way to her job. Yeah. And they like hung out at the they beach for a little bit. They went to the beach to have a cartwheel competition. competition. Yeah. That is so like... I mean, you're a that little girl. That is so innocent. Yeah. Like, you're a little girl. You. That is what little and... girls do. They're innocent little girls. And little do you... Um, of course, this creep is on the beach. And then when they're on their way, Ronnie Alcala stops them and says, Hey, I need to take pictures, pictures for my photography class. Would you like to pose for me, basically? And, um... Do they agree? They were interrupted by, I think, one of the friend's neighbors. Yeah, she interrupted and was like, she was, she Are you got, guys She okay? was like, Are you guys okay? okay? Because he looks like a weirdo. Fucking creep again. A creep. He looks like a weirdo. Asking for pictures from little girls. From 12 year old little girls. Yeah. No sir, you cannot have pictures of 12 year old little girls. Because that's weird. Um, so when they were on their way back, Robin continued to go to work. And um, her friend went home. Robin, she drops her friend off at the house. And she took her friend's bicycle. To get right. she to goes work. To get to work. So she's at the ballet bike. studio because she's 12. Because she's 12. 12, a child. Yes. And um, he had apparently caught up to her by then and took her then. Um, and that was the last time she was seen alive by mm -hmm. her friend. Um, her friend was the last person. A fire crew was performing um, routine checks. 12 days after she went missing and found Robin's remains out in a remote area, which is really sad. Really sad. Um, Robin's friend that went to the beach with her that day made a composite sketch of oh, that the man, man that approached them at the beach asking to take photos. Um, the sketch was released all over the media in Southern California. And Alcala's parole officer saw it and called it in. Um, and shared information and said, you need to check in on this guy because he looks just like that sketch. Yeah. And he is sketch. <laughs> he is sketch. <laughs> Let's sketch. be real here. He is, yeah. Um, he was then arrested July 1979 for homicide. Um, because they searched Alcala's home and um, they found a storage locker and um, when they went and looked in that storage locker they found a bunch of tons of pictures weird of shit women and young boys weird as shit right after finding some of the girls from the photos the police figured it out he would ask to take pictures of whether it would be for a magazine or if he was um, in a photography class. class. Yeah. 
and then he would try to convince them to get in his car with them, you know, to come look at this that I have at my house, or I can drop you off wherever you need to go. He so, in the storage locker, they also yeah. found a small silk bag containing multiple sets of earrings. Basically from his victims. Stupid. There were yeah. trophies. Yeah, basically. It's Idiots. what he kept them with. He kept um, them as... Yeah. Oh, God. He's so stupid individual. Alcala claimed they were his, but when they were shown to Robin's mother, she recognized the set that she let Robin borrow. So they were hers, they weren't even Robin's. Yeah. So, I mean... That's how they found out that he basically did murder whatever he did to her. Yeah. Um, because um, he had her earrings. The, the, the set he, the, the one he was wearing. She yeah. was wearing whenever, the last time she was wearing. Um, in February of 1980, he went on trial for the murder of Robin Samso. The trial lasted for two and a half months with over 50 witnesses. Um, the jury convicted Alcala and sentenced it's him to death. death. So he was he was uh, sentenced to the death penalty, um, first degree murder, everything. Yeah. I mean, and it took a while for the trial to happen, or you know, yeah. actually get to for the end everything result. to be done with. And then, <laughs> you think this is over. <laughs> Everything got overturned. Stupid. Um, yeah. So he was tried again, convicted again. again. Death penalty. Death penalty again. again. Unanimous. This Everybody time. was like, yep, yeah. you're guilty. Here's the death penalty. Like You're done there's for. There's no reason why you even think that you're not guilty. And then it's overturned. Again. Again. Oh my gosh, stop overturning this, guys. Oh my gosh, stop. Imagine, like, the pain on the family. Just, like, Robin going Sam's through it. Mother. Going, going through her death and then going through two whole this, trials. And her brothers. She had brothers, yeah. too, which were, like, I saw interviews with them in it, and they were just so, everything I say, yeah. was so painful. Her mom. So, in 2003, the district attorney's office was preparing to try him again. After having a lot of the evidence taken away from them, the DNA technology gave them more than they could have hoped more for. Yeah. Alcala's DNA was linked to three Los Angeles cold cases. Yeah. Um, he was then charged with the murders of 18-year-old Jill Barkham, 27-year-old Georgia Wickstead, and 32-year-old Charlotte Lamb, who had been who had all been killed, killed between November 1977 and June 1978. So, I mean, obviously that was him. Yeah. Not only was Alcala a murderer, but he was a serial killer because he had killed more than three people with a cool down time between each murder. So, that tied it together for him. He was also tied to another murder, 21-year-old Jill Parento, and if I said their name wrong, I'm super sorry because it's a it's a different name. Yeah. Is this the girl that the sister found out about? I don't know, but she was killed six days before Robin Samso. Um, Prosecutors dropped the charges due to lack of evidence on her case, though, which is really sad because her family, you know. Okay. So in 2010, the district attorney's office decided to try him for all five murders. Um, almost 31 years after Robin Samso's murder, I'll call a stance trial as his own attorney. Own attorney. No one wants to defend him. Crazy Obviously. pants. True psychopath form. He's just Mr. Crazy. I feel like at this point he's like super old too. Yeah, and he's got that gross, curly, like always wet gray, looking, yeah. gray, nasty, ramen noodle looking hair. <laughs> and I'm just like, dude, please cut your hair because you look gross. Stop. You're gross, um, you look gross. And I can't deal when the crazy pants always do their own attorney. It's just. Yeah. <sighs> he, um,. He proceeds to call Robin's mother to the stand as a defense witness. Yes. As his own witness. Okay. 
to impeach her character because apparently she had brought a gun to, to one the court of the trials, trials, which she didn't bring it out, but she she, she took it because did, she was angry. She did admit to it. Yeah. And I mean, who's going to be mad at her for doing that because he killed her daughter? Yeah. I'm not sure. mad at her. I, I mean, yeah, like you as a mom, I you would do it. Doesn't do anything with it, but has thoughts. He just, but. and then he just runs all over her character because she brought a gun in one of the trials 30 years ago. It's ridiculous. Anyway, um, so as he's being trialed for all of the murders, he only speaks about Robin's murder and ignores the others. Yeah. So he doesn't acknowledge even being he guilty He doesn't, about. yeah. He doesn't even, he doesn't even, like, say their names. He doesn't talk about them. He doesn't say anything about them. And it's just really super weird because he only says anything about being tried about Robin's murder. Yeah. It's like he doesn't even know that he's it's being weird tried and, for the other ones. Honestly, like, even disrespectful. For you to not even acknowledge the fact that yes. you did that. It's kind um, of, yeah. And then, as, um... <laughs> What? As some evidence for himself, he shows his episode of the dating game he was in. Yeah. Which so is so ridiculous because he just showed it because he wanted to prove that he was wearing earrings that day. It's a fucking mess. Just Sorry. Because he language. wanted to prove that he was wearing earrings. So, so ridiculous. Dude, dude, stop. So, Jed Mills, the actor that we had talked about earlier, was called to the stand, and he said if a guy was wearing dangly earrings in the 70s, I would have noticed it. Yeah. And because you can't it's... even see his earrings. Like, you can, if he was wearing any, he was wearing tiny little studs. And he had long hair at, the, at that time. So, so uh, yeah. But you can't use that, man. Don't even, don't. Don't He's just trying. He was just trying to get out of um, being in jail, getting out of the death penalty, and yeah, he's a freaking sicko. He needs to. So, not only that, Charlotte, um, Charlotte Lamb's DNA was found on one of the sets of the earrings, proving that one of those was hers mm -hmm. that he kept as a trophy for murdering her. So, can't get out of that. That's pretty, it's pretty damning. Pretty hard evidence. <laughs> yeah. Um, the jury took one day to find out Carla guilty. I mean. I mean, who that's, the fuck? I that's pretty. Yeah. I mean, at least get lunch out of it. <laughs> at a sentencing, Tally Shapiro made a, made a um, statement about what he had did to her and how it should have stopped with her. Um, and how it shouldn't have even. Yeah. The jury then sentenced him to death, and I'll call it is currently serving his sentence on death row at California State Prison in Corcoran. Good. Yes. That's where he should be. Yeah. Piece of dirt. Um, in 2010, the Huntington Beach and New York City Police Departments released 120 of Alcala's photos and asked the public to help identify them. Um, in addition, there were 900 photos that cannot be released due to being so sexually explicit, mm -hmm. which is so sad. Um, in the first few weeks, 21 women came forward to identify themselves, and at least six families said they believe they may be their loved ones, but none were, um... None were actually, none like, were proven. really connected until yeah. 2013, and then a family actually did identify one of the victims. Which is the one that I was talking about earlier. Yeah. And she, yeah, she was able to basically find out what happened to yeah. her sister. And I feel like that's important. I mean, like, your sister disappears. So go look, guys, if you're I mean, missing a family member in that area. It might be a sicko, you know? Go look. It's so sad. It's really sad. I don't know. I feel like, what do you think, like, why... I didn't know any of his background, though. Did you know it? Did you find anything on yeah, his Yeah, it just, like, he didn't have a terrible... I didn't want to put a lot... I didn't want to talk a lot about his background. His dad left them when they were, you know, when him and his siblings were younger, mm -hmm. which 
A lot of people's dads do that and they don't Go kill murder. people. They don't rape little yep. girls. Yep. One thing I found, Cornelia Criley, mm -hmm. she was a Trans World Airlines flight attendant. Um, she was raped and strangled in her Upper East Side apartment in 1971. And then Ellen Jane Hoover. I remember her. Yes. Disappeared well, in 1977. Reading about her. And her remains were found um, on the, the Rockefeller estate. And those two were also added too. So they were also added. To his like yeah. list of murders, yeah. So yeah. he ended up not being tried for some murders, and he did for others, but... Yeah. Either way, I think that he got what he deserved. Yeah. I think that this should have happened a long time ago, before he even... Yeah, and like Tally Shapiro said, it should have stopped with her. Yeah. Like, they knew what he did to her, and they had proof of it, they saw what he had did to her, mm -hmm. and it should have... That should have been it, and it should have, should have it. stopped, because... They knew what he was capable of, and they knew that he could get little girls in the car with him. I guess that completes our information on this freaking creep. Now I'm sad. Ex I know. It's really sad. Those poor little girls. Okay. Excuse my language, anyways, because I did cuss a little bit. Yeah, but it's okay. it was because the, you just want to feel sort of like anger towards... Yeah. Sorry, excuse my dog. <laughs> um, anger towards this person that should have gone as far as he did and he did get far but anyway okay, all right nice. well we hope that you guys uh enjoyed sort of like our little story time um we are gonna try to come back and just even probably try to do more stuff than true crime tuesdays but yeah. for right now we're gonna try to keep it true crime tuesdays um if anybody is watching and wants us to maybe talk about Something they something want. they want to hear about, or and we'll improve every time. Yeah, or because <laughs> this is our first time. Yeah, any like you know tips or yeah. whatever you guys have. Uh, and we'll do other things other than makeup and hair. We can try like face masks and do other just stuff like that. Any yeah. lifestyle type of things. Yeah. Um, so I did just finish listening to a podcast about Rodney Alcala. Um, and it was a good one. If anyone wants to know anything about it, it's from Wondery. And they always do a really good job. All of their podcasts are good. Um, it is called The Dating Game Killer if you want to learn more about him. And then I'll put down in the info about where I got all of our info. And we're not professionals. We're not we professionals. We left out information. Whatever. We definitely left a lot of information we out. Did. And I think that we, we don't have hours to talk about it. Yeah. And this video would be hours long. Any we makeup that we did left. use, we'll just jump it down in our description box. And, and then we we got new Lange products. Oh, yes. For free. And I really <laughs> liked it. You, If they're still having it, it was like you spend $29, $29. you get a free one. So go get one go if, get, you can, yeah. if you can do it. And they have sales all the time, too. So oh, they all yeah, they always they have always have. Thanks for thanks, thanks for, for watching. watching. If you want to subscribe, because we are going to be here almost every Tuesday, we're going to try to do every Tuesday. But I would think we're going to start with like maybe every other Tuesday. Yeah. Get ourselves there, and then once everything starts getting because you know this whole COVID thing. Yeah. Anyway, if, stay inside. Stay inside. I know that we're here together, <laughs> but, but we've already been together at work, we so in really the same place in yeah. the same hospital. So yeah. we, if one of us has been exposed, exposed the other one has for sure. Yeah. So. Thanks yeah. for so anyways, watching. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye. Thanks. Bye.